who has now come to introduce a new, president. a new president. It was emotional for me. I didn't like that meeting. I, I felt this... Yeah. And in my heart of hearts, I was trying to convey to the president, it shouldn't have been this we shouldn't way. Have gotten we shouldn't have gotten to this point. Mm. But, again, with the sense of mm. my words, but PF, Mukashela Muli Muamoni, at that point, my Muamoni had arrived. Mm. And the presidents were sitting, and President Lungu was in the corner, and I felt bad greeting the president. Now, to be former president, and ushering in a friend who is president-elect into this meeting. But I had to do it because what's done is done. It's what it is. So is he coming? I said, no, I'm going to get him now. I just wanted to check who's here and what's going on. I went At out. that stage, had President Lungu considered, or oh, that was a concession? No, he had, he had considered. He had considered. Graciously for him, at least between me and Simon Mitty and our talking and everything, he had considered, he was being very presidential about it. I must commend him. Mm. He was very presidential. All he wanted was certain terms and conditions to be conveyed. When I went to pick up my friend from the car to bring him to the meeting, he almost insisted. Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Savage. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Let's come to President Edgar Lungu. Mm. Well, for the sixth Republican president, again, um, I think off the top of my fingers, I was probably the fourth person yeah. that was receiving a phone call from Leonica House, where the acting president then, the sixth Republican president was, Edgar Chagolungu, to be summoned to his home. This is after 01 in the morning, on the fateful day when the late president, Michael Chufiasata, died in London driving to Lewanika, I found this very somber mood. Now, when you entered Valungu's house, turning right after the stairs, there was a right door, which was like a very small room. But this is where I would call it his thinking drinking room was. It was just fridges, beer, and books. Not a sitting room, a very small room. Yeah, yeah. And he had the specific seat where he would always sit with his legs on top of the, the chair. The chair. <laughs> and somewhere here, there would always be a cabot. Yeah. Either a shot uh, or a bottle, but mm. some alcohol. So when I entered, he was trying to keep a straight face, but he was downcast. And, and, I, I, and all he said to me, he reached out and threw two documents in front of me. The lawyer. PF Constitution, the lawyer. The Republican Constitution. Sit down. So I said, Mula and Dunch to a Panganom Bakuno. Even to the Kalulu, the Tubulam Tushimi. So let's sit. I've uh, summoned you here because of some sad news. Sad news. I said, what? No, I sat about for London. Oh, my God. And I'm thinking, another election. Mm. So I said, oh, when did this news come? Then he runs me through the 
intelligence briefs and the news, how it came, because his acting president has received this. But he said to me, the team, the legal team, we need to start brainstorming this. I am also aware that as we sit here, uh, the vice president has also called a meeting of some people. Kufam, could you a guy Scott? And the attorney general is that side, Musa Mwen, my young brother. And I said, okay, um, what do you want us to do? We, we, he was basically emotional, depressed, and then thinking, I'm an acting president, I'm SG, I'm this, and he, I think he had three, four port, portfolios, and he knew the limelight would be on him. So the issue was now the speech to announce the death of a president early in the morning, the issue of... <sighs> I was also now trying to process this and thinking where is the information coming from, who was there, what happened. Before we got into the details of it, I think people started trooping in. And um, I asked the president, in cabinet, how much support do you have? He whispered to me, the central committee, he whispered to me and I said, the first thing we need is this, second thing we need is this, and then I think we've got to think of the speech because by morning, daybreak, this would not be a normal day. The Zambians need to know. Mm. And I think by that time, we were now looking at you. And by you, I mean you, mm. Mm. Anthony Mukwita, and the others to draft something. I think by that time, people had trooped in and it was like Chirironomba. Yeah. But the Zambians out there were peacefully sleeping. For us, it was work. Yeah. That's how my journey with the sixth Republican president began. The night Basata died. Yeah. Now we had to make him a candidate. We had to get him across the presidency because... If you remember the Constitution at that time, we had 90 days mm, mm, mm. within which to go for an election. It's not like now where you've got a running mate who can take over. No, 90 days. And in those 90 days, fights began. Because in his mind, somehow Guy Scott just didn't want Walungu to be president. He had put his foot down. Whatever advice he had received from whomever, I don't know, but there were meetings being held at Guy Scott's farm. There was a fight against Lewanika House, where Lungu was staying, and Guy Scott didn't want him. Long story short, the PF spent between 21 to 29 days in-house fighting. Rules about the convention, candidature, and things. By that time, we had people popping up from the blues my young brother, Harry Kalawa, wanted to be president. My young brother, Chimbakambwiri, wanted to be president. The son to the late president, Mulengasata, put his name in the hat. My young brother, Mausa, Luwinda. Mm. So now it's a question of how do we get a candidate? And how do the others back him? It, it was a fight. But we had to go into our books of what we have learned strategically and politically, maneuver. But we had to get to Alungu, first of all, to understand, do you want this? Mm. Because if he didn't want it, we didn't have a fighting chance. He was like, and you'd always pass the ball. Mm. It's like a through mm. ball. Mm. Uh, but let me poke a power car and things. So... But eventually we got him in line. And I remember being summoned somewhere in New Kasama by the late Vachkwanda, uh, by Edison Mulenga. These were friends to us at respectable men. I think Vamayova, Reverend Didith Mutale. 
Some other prominent people. Yeah. Yeah. And we're basically being put on the spotlight. And over Chikwanda says the late uh, May so rest in peace was you work Eastern province. Do you want this party to be seen as a member party? Can you go and tell these people that we have to rally behind this man? There must be this unison that we can also come, a president can also come from the other side. Yeah, to our dear viewers, although there was no clear succession, Plan. and President Michael Satad, Vice President Guy Scott, who everyone knew couldn't be president mm -hmm. because of his Scottish heritage, although he, was, he is Zambian, um, President Michael Sata appeared to have settled on Edgar Lungu mm. because remember you were saying he was Minister of Defense, he was yes. Minister of Justice. Mm. He had just after dismissal of winter become SG. Secretary General yes. of the party and he was acting president. Correct. So although there was no direct reference that he is my successor, by his action it appeared President Sata had left Edgar Lungu as his successor. Also the manner in which he left him as acting president. Please speak to that. He was Minister of Defense, I think. <clears throat> and he was going for some function in Angola. Yeah. It was, was a static meeting. Yeah, he was mm -hmm. in flight. And the president's trip was then sanctioned. And he needed to leave. The president put his foot down. And he says, I'm not leaving until Edgar is in the airspace. So when the president, and I'm talking about uh, the then acting president, Lungu, arrived in Angola, he was told, these other people you've come with can attend whatever is going on, but you, Go back you have been summoned him. back home. He didn't know why he was being summoned back home, but obviously the president says, I'm not leaving until when the plane was in Zambian airspace, that's when he signed that I'm leaving this to him as president, president to this man. And mm -hmm. Like you're saying, all indications were but mm. So basically, although he didn't say it, all indications were this was my preferred candidate. Mm. And he, I trust him enough not to give me the kind of problems I faced with other people when I left him as acting president. So that to us was enough a message to drive to the party membership to say, come on, guys, this, this is how we're going to score this goal. So fast forward, rules were set, candidates filed, we went to the convention. But here's a problem. Guy Scott, in his mind, did not want Lungu. Mm -hmm. So we seemingly ended up with two conventions. But because we had already planned for Mulungushi and the delegates had arrived, we decided we're going to go ahead because the chairperson of the party at the time, Mamai Nongewina, was with us. Mm. And uh, I recall when we went to Mulungushi, we arrived the night before the convention. Bawili Sanda was always in touch with me because he was... Uh, responsible for, for mobilization, for mobilization, but also to look after the president and Mukupa, So they were always like nif nif, but in quite a legal to liquida all the time. So some legal issues came up, and we ended up at my late young brother's law firm, Tutu Angulube. <sighs> and I went to Tutu and I said, Tutu, in this thing, what do you want? He says, no, we must hold a convention and we must. I said, what are the rules? So we agreed. Then I said to Tutwa, okay, whatever we're going to do, there should be no backing down and there should be no withdrawing from Lungush Conference because that is the venue set. The Guy Scott team wanted us to go and move out all the delegates out of Mulungushi, Rock of Authority, and take them to town where there was supposed to be a roll call and registration of delegates, and then we had to take them back. When I heard of those tricks, I didn't want to go into convention, but from that point, I said, I'm in. I dressed up, 
I went to Tutu. I said, I'm a tricks here, Tamp. We called the Honorable John Piri. Uh, I don't know where he is now, but he became ambassador, I think, to Malawi. To Malawi, the former minister yes, of education. Yes. Mm. And I said, Piri, these are politics. We cannot allow whatever is coming. My sister, Honorable Sylvia Maseva, Masebo, who was with Guy Scott at the time. And she was chairperson of uh, elections. She walked in. And then she says, nope, everybody must leave to fill it to a temporary registration outside. And I said, we've got thousands of people here. Mm. Buses to move them for accreditation. Back to Tuwele Kuno, it's midnight. How are we going to do this thing? So I told Tutwa, you are the commissioner for these elections. But John Piri, you are the master of ceremony. In this regard, disregard whatever Sylvia is saying. I pulled the wedding sander, the Sami Omukupa, and the candidate, the, our preferred candidate, in this case, ECL. I said, the tricks have started. Now it's a fight. The moment we leave this convention center, we've lost. So we are not leaving. So I pulled your, your friend, Anton Mukwita, and I said, we are now going into National Council. Immediately. Tutu announced National Council. So uh, John Piri has asked, can we move into National Council? They said, yes. And the National Council then adopted the agenda and moved into the convention mm. immediately. So from the hall where we were, resolutions were passed, hands, votes were taken, minutes were taken, and then we said from here, immediately to the ground. Whatever is happening, good guys go to town if you shall have you. After that, we moved the people to the convention now, after National Council to the convention. Minutes were drafted. Your friend Mukwita went, typed everything, moved. We gave them to uh, Davis Chama, who was announcing the whatever. Then Mayowa Inonge Wina brought the meeting now to order, and the convention started. Before we could start, a chopper came. Mm with paramilitary, fully armed Silvia Masewa. again, Sylvia Masewa. Cha, cha, cha person of elections. You can't go on with this. But after Tuamu Kanina, as national council, we resolved that we're moving into the convention. She still came. Before she could even make the announcement where she was making the announcement, the delegates were getting agitated, and they said, Tuala kuma nomba yu. I think she was whisked by the police. They said, Mama, Situation is tense. Back in the helicopter, if I'm sending Sylvia, maybe I should up. My mama in Ongewina called the meeting to order. The meeting started. We resolved. Votes were taken. Candidates were lined up from each of the ten provinces, and we took a vote as to how we are going to conduct the elections. The candidate of Edgar Chagolung was the only one standing. The others were sitting with the vice president, hoping there would be a second convention. It didn't happen. Now, you, the party has received a lot of criticism for that. Yes. That the conference was illegal. The conference just went with show of hands. Then they said, no, there were a lot of pangas and violence to prevent the other candidates. What do you say no, when you hear these criticisms? No, 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 no. I was on the scene. I was directing the events, I was talking to my young brother who was commissioner of the elections, the late Tutu Angulube. Well, my Inonge winner was there. She called the meeting to order. The candidature of Edgar Lung was the only one on the ballot. The other candidates thought Guy Scott and Sylvia Masebo could call a meeting, read the constitution of the PF. The person to call the meeting such a convention is the chairperson of the party. Mama Inonge Wina was the chairperson and she was with us. So she called the meeting to order. As for the show of hands, read the constitution again. It is allowed. When there's only one candidate, why are you going to start voting? He's unopposed. So what is the problem? There was nothing wrong there. And when the decisions were taken, the votes were counted, the commissioner for the elections, my late brother, uh, Tutu Anguluve, said these are the results. And he announced the candidature of Edgar Chagalungu. Immediately I whispered, 
I was on the podium. I whispered, could we have a stand? Never mukupa. Get this man out of here. Security risk. Immediately, motor vehicles came, zoomed out. Chagalungu was back at Lewanika House. Before we could leave the convention, there was too many machinations, but the police came and told us, Mwipitoku, Mwipitoku, there was a bit of, you know, as usual in politics. But we got to the lodge where we were sitting. Akabuari, to le celebrate, Afiriani, Fiashala, Aba Nuavale, Nua. Exactly 2012 in the night, phone idea. Who's calling? K. Zazul. General, not yes. We have a problem. I said, what's the problem? No. I want to believe I talk about a convention. At what convention? Not to push a convention. No. Where are you? Not we're still in Kawe. To case a No, 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 no. The acting president wants you here. Hmm. Looked at the time. Not in Shalari. I know what. Yeah, Malaysia Mudi. If you only if you shall, you know how case I was. So I said, okay. Give us an hour and a half. So I told the boys, it's time to move. Security propped up, transport prepared, fuel. We left Kabwe in the night, hammered those vehicles straight to Lewanika. We're still in regalia to Africa. Straight. We found Balungu in that same little office at Lewanika. At Lewanika. He says to me, you're a lawyer. Uh, we can't have two conventions. Not the only way is we, we have to put up an injunction. We can't allow that convention to take place. I said, we've done this before. Are you sure? I called my young brother Tutwa. I called... Uh, the chap who became legal advisor to Squana. Squana. And I also called another chap, all lawyers, and myself. And I said, get in the car. We went to the chambers. And we started typing. We had no secretary. Can you remember? Can you imagine now? This is about 22 something. And we are one finger. <laughs> typing by ourselves in the night. <laughs> By 0145, we had finished typing. So the documents were ready. I gave Squana, take back to the acting president to go and sign the affidavits and things like that, and stuff like that, and whatever. He says, no, Movikish, Nadiaba, was it the chairperson or somebody? But we changed the names and they signed. By half past two in the morning, documents were ready. How do we get this into court? The rules are courts are 24-7. You can follow no, they, a judge. They, they, your critics accuse you that you woke up the courts yes, I did. in the night. Yes, I did. And there's now no you are law. saying courts are 24-7. Yes, there is no law against that. Ah, okay. No law against that. I'll give you an example. If in a divorce matter between you and your wife, and this is an example, not that it's going to happen. Your wife is a foreigner, and she wants to take the children out of the country. You wait until morning, when the flight is at 0730. Once she gets on those, those kids on the plane with herself, she's gone, and the kids are gone. What are you going to do? You have the right to go to a judge, get an injunction to stay her departure, so that the kids don't leave until your divorce is issued and get done, and it's no more. We have was, followed judges on the golf course. Was that injunction the only one that has been gotten in those circumstances? No, there have been plenty of injunctions gotten on Saturday, on Sunday. Judges sign. Okay. Why would the judge sign something which is illegal? Have they asked themselves that? Mm. This is a full judge of the high court. Would she sign an illegal document? Of course not. She knew what she was doing. Mm. And she understood the gravity. There was a certificate of agency attached to the application. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So we went and now got the marshal, the chief marshal of the high court to open the high court. 
Documents were stamped. Why were the officials waking up? They understood. They could be awakened any night, any time. They stamped the document. Well, you have said on, the, on, on this platform that courts are 24-7. 24-7. They mm -hmm. can leave their chambers to go home, but they can, be a, they can sign any document, any time, any time, so okay. long as the, 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 the file is allocated to that particular judge. They can sign. What we did is we filed documents in court. Then we drove to the judge in charge then, who was Judge Chadi. Remember Judge Chadi from Manawasan Company? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was the judge in charge. We went somewhere in Ibex near the American embassy there. The judge allocated. He says, I can't deal with this matter. I'm allocating this matter to this particular judge. We then drove from Ibex Hill. We are driving in the night. Early morning now, to where the judge was, somewhere, Mama Roma, we found the judge because I think the judge in charge had called to say, I have allocated this case. There's a certificate of urgency. Deal with it. The judge was in gowns, but she read the document. She said, stand outside. I want to read. She read, understood the gravity of the matter, and she said, come to the high court. She came and signed in chambers in the high court. And then we took the documents and had them sealed with the seal of the high court. That's how the order became official. The judge went back home. By quarter to six, I was at Lewanika House knocking. The candidate came down and I said, here's your injunction. <clears throat> but he asked me, you've got the injunction now. But, but how do we get it, it to Kawe? Because we needed to save it. Mm. Because those people were still going to go ahead because they didn't know that there was an injunction. So we started now finding out who was going to be the commissioner for that particular election. Since election. Tutua had declared the election Correct. with, with conference, yeah. Found mm. out, and one of the friends I had missed out as a classmate, Jemano Mutareka Ulungombe. Mm. A classmate of mine yeah. was the commissioner. Was for the newly appointed commissioner to for, replace Tutu Angulo. No, for that com second convention, yeah. Tutu has done. Yeah. Being a classmate, we were on talking terms. I picked up the phone and I called Germano. And I said to Germano, you're the commissioner, where are you? I said, I'm in Kabwe. There, there's this thing and I said, Germano, I have an injunction. If that thing goes ahead, there can be no declaration. Because if you declare, we're going to have two candidates. But more importantly, if you declare, it means you're having two conventions. That convention has been blocked. No, send me on WhatsApp, but I also need the physical copy. I took a shot. I sent him on WhatsApp. And I said, the physical copy will be with you in the next 45 minutes. Okay. He rang back and says, okay, I've received. I said, you take that to my brother, Anthony Casolo, who was with Guy Scott, and go and show him and say there's an injunction. If they need to go to make that convention go ahead, they need to fight that injunction. Otherwise, whatever you're doing there is in an attitude. So now I went to the candidate, and I said, how do we get this? Cross. Do we have a chopper? Do we have cars or anything? So he says, no, we've got a standby chopper at Polo Green. So I said, Squana, Kafuale suit. I'm done in a canad, Kafuale suit. You are working with me throughout the night, no one at age. At that time, my older brother, Mark Mushiri, walks in. And I said, Ba Mushiri, position ni in Asha. He says, no, Nana Mushindika. Chopa ile to light wish. No problem. That's not a problem. So Mark Mushiri and Skwana took that. I found, I think who was on the ground that time? Was it the Honorable Kampiongo and some other people? I told them we have the injunction, this and this, but you have to pick a high court official, marshal, from the high court or sub court to go and serve. And you must be protected. So I told Germano, drive out of the conference. Go and meet these people at this point. They have to serve you this document. True to form, Mutale went there and the physical copy was served. After the chopper landed, the high court official was picked. Documents were served. So Mutale says, I've received this. I said, fine, now you know what to do. 
Show them. Ah, but the way the conference is going, let's just go through the motions. But I won't declare. I won't declare. And that's what happened. They went through the motions. I think my young brother, Mao Sampa, won or whatever. But Mutali says, I cannot declare the results because there's this injunction. In their hope of hopes, they were hoping they could find lawyers and come to Lusaka, fight the injunction, so that by the time the night was going through, they would have dissolved the injunction. That injunction stood. They didn't dissolve that injunction. So Mutale Jemano Kaulungombe could not announce the winner. So Ed Galungu remained the sole candidate. And that's how PF moved with this candidate. And he became the president on the 15th of January, 2015, when the elections were held. So that, there was no illegality. And I want to say to the Zambians, it, you see, sometimes you think we lawyers do crooked things and things. No, this was within the confines of the law. Mm. And there was nothing illegal that was done for Edgar Chagalungu to become a candidate and later president of this country. Nothing. And I'm glad to say that after that, the PF did come together, come reconcile. together mm. and reconcile and we moved as one team. In the last 21 days of the campaign, we campaigned together, all of us, under one banner with one candidate at that time in 2015. And that's how Edgar won those elections. No, I spent time on this matter to allow you to explain because mm. I think it's been a matter of controversy. And uh, I'm glad that you've well, shed light yeah, uh, mm. on the matter. Again, you didn't make cabinet. You had carried this campaign on your shoulder and you didn't make cabinet. What happened? My involvement was to keep the spirit of Vasat alive. Um, the truth is, I, I can't say before I started working with Walungu that I was very close to Walungu. I can't say that. No. But on the night of Vasada's death and the way we worked together, I think we became close because, you know, there were phone calls flying around. We could talk to each other and things. But my job, as I saw it at that time, was to steady the ship. There are things in between that happened, between the Central Committee and the factions within the party that were going on before the convention, which, if you ask Mama Inonge Wina, she will tell you. Our young brother at the time, Steve Mikadile, was able to give us one of his lodges, I think the one in Jesmondine. That's where we kept the Central Committee after the burial of Vasata. And we had all these wrangles to iron out. And I worked very closely with my late brother, um, former PS Home Affairs, Mulenga. Dr. Dr. Mulenga. Dr. Mulenga. Mm. Chilesha Mulenga. Chilesha. Uh, brilliant man, brilliant mm. man. And that's how we held the Central Committee together. And our job at that time, as we saw it, was we, we understood the vision of Asad. We had to keep this ship running. And we were not there to get jobs. Mm. I, I didn't go to Alungu to ask for a job. I didn't want him to give me a job. Because I thought, first of all, we've got a very short term. But what we didn't want to do was to lose power. Mm. Mm. And I thought, okay, 2016 is what we had discussed in This one, 2015, they've already got mm. a cabinet in place, and they were working. All they needed was the president. Yeah. And that's, that's what happened. And then he appointed Va, Va Mayova Inongewina. As, as a uh, vice president. Yes. And, and that's how it went. Yeah. You played another key role in 2016. Uh, but by 2018, clearly you had fallen out of favor. I think you then formed Zambia Must Prosper. Uh, just tell us about that. And towards the election, you ended up working with President Hakainde Ichilema. That's true. Um, one of the things that I found was going wrong in the PF was, again, it became a closed shop. People didn't want fresh ideas. 
People didn't want new faces. It became a club, which it is, under the Registrar of Societies, but a closed club. Unless you were part of them, you could not be allowed in. But you see, for me also, one thing people must understand is whenever I'm doing something, there's a principle involved. If I say I'm going to work with you, mm -hmm. it does not necessarily mean that if you do something wrong or you want to do something wrong, I'll support you. No. Mm -hmm. For me, I think it's about the principle. And our difference with the then Central Committee, after we had ushered in by Ed Galungu and the other people of the PF, was that I was seen to be, what's the word, too smart. Mm. He can dribble us. You know, uh, that we should be away from You know, that we should be away from Credit to my older brother, Valungu. He didn't have that. But the people around, although we had given them the power mm. and we had fought to have them back in power, they didn't see it that way. They wanted now to start branding some of us as enemies. But for me, I did have quiet words. And if some of the Central Committee members are honest, including Valungu, I think the issue of this third term, I brought it up. Because I said legally, we fought a third term against Vachilu. If Valungu is going to go for 2021, in my view, in my humble view, this will be a third term. My interpretation of the Constitution at that time and today is that that would be a third term. So I said I can't support this. And people wanted me to be on their side. And I said, no, I can't. On principle, I can't. Because as a lawyer, we are there to protect and defend the Constitution. The moment you don't do that, then what are you defending? What are you protecting? Which people are you going to say the Constitution is supreme? Mm -hmm. That was the difference. But then I also began to hear machinations within the party. I mean, my brother... You know, K. Zulu as political advisor and others around President Lungu, they wanted me to be as distant as they possibly could keep me. I know for a fact that I think President Lungu did earmark a position for me, and a letter was written to that regard. I know, because it was brought to my attention. Mm, we heard that you were appointed as Minister of Justice. Yes. Mm. And we had meetings, we talked. But because of whatever was going on in the party, next thing I was told, Lubinda is the Minister of Justice. I didn't fight. I kept quiet. Because for me, all I wanted was peace. Even at the time that I was being expelled from the party, I didn't take the party to court because I didn't want to. It was like in Derwish Shavasat. I had too much history, too much association with this party. I knew, and some of the things I'd done, some of the people enjoying or who enjoyed under PF didn't even know how they got into power. But I said to myself, you know, as a Christian, you leave everything to God because it's either your time or it's not your time. And for me, I left it at that. That's why I didn't go to court. I think when Mumbipiri, my sister from Muflira, brought that letter one year after the so-called Central Committee had expelled me, can you imagine they expel you, no letter is given to you. They come and give you one year after the fact that, no, now you're expelled officially. I laughed because psychologically I had gotten over it. And psychologically I had moved on. And I didn't... But what they thought was Aliyah Kukot, I said no. But what I also didn't want to do was to go and start begging to be a member of a, a group that didn't want me to be their member. So I said, you want this power, you want this political party, take it. 
But I knew the secrets of PF. I knew the cracks within PF. So when it came to electioneering, I knew that without some of us, there'll be no one to advise Walungu in there. I knew. There'll be no one to steer this ship. I knew. So these were guys who thought because they've amassed a bit of money, they thought money votes. Money doesn't vote. You can have all the money in the world, I'll still beat you at an election. You can have all the authority in the world, I'll still beat you if you don't know what to do at the ballot, if you don't know what to do in the campaign. So for me, I said, okay, my words, and I still repeat, to Mumbipiri when I called her, and the PF at large was, if you mwachita, mukashara muri muamone. That I'll repeat. I told them that. So when they expelled me, I decided I'm going to stay away. And I stayed away. And I wasn't willing to do anything. I was now building my movement of Zambia must prosper, eventually to graduate into a political party. But then people began coming to my chambers. And these people were NGOs, uh, people from the UPND, the church, some from PF who were also disgruntled, and senior citizens of this country. They just said to me, look, you're a political animal. You can't just stay. Kafum Nobe, we have spoken to him and he has sent us here and things. I think the turning point was the relatives to Aka Indeke. Mm. And um, I listened. I was given a piece of paper with names on the piece of paper. And I was told, if you know all these people, these are your mutual friends. Now they were taking me back to the campus days. So Did you meet President Akainde Chilema before that? No. Ah, okay. No. But did you know him? Of course. We knew each other from campus. I mean, ah, he came okay. from the village in Wengwa. And I knew how he arrived on campus. I, we were coming from Copper Belt. I mean, we were Copper boys. We, we were town boys. He was from the village. But we, we mingled. We saw mm. each other. Mm. And we understood each other. We had common friends. We had, you know, and as campus would have it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know. You started mixing in the same circles. Mm. Stuff like that. So we knew each other. Yeah. Yeah. But we were not... But you had not worked with him politically? No. Ah, no. Okay. And I didn't think... So and I when, said, when do you, did, after all these overtures from mm -hmm. everyone's stakeholders, including uh, his uh, family mem or relatives, when did you meet him and what did you discuss? After the last meeting with his family. Mm. That's when I told him, I told them, okay, go and tell him, I'll, I'll meet him. I want to listen to him first. That's when they went back and told him, oh, no, he has agreed. After all the NGOs and OSIDAs, church and the other people, I said, okay, go and tell him we can meet. Then we agreed. And in terms of the meetings, where to meet, the venue was agreed. We met. I met Aga in the HLMA 11 times, like I'm meeting you one-on-one, -on -one, alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. He insisted we meet alone first. Those 11 meetings, I was asking him questions. I wanted to know what his political philosophy was. I also wanted to understand the guy, because although we had mutual friends and we knew each other from campus, I wanted to know who is this guy. What has he done? What are his plans for the country? And things like that. And what were your impressions? He's not a politician. Mm. No. He's a businessman. But he wanted power at all costs. I think he wanted power to cap the fact that whatever he had done or whatever losses financially or otherwise he had suffered in the times he had been losing elections, he had to recoup something. I saw that he didn't really have a plan for the country and he still doesn't. I saw that although he had the machine called the UPND, it wasn't very well oiled. And they didn't have the strategies to dislodge the PF. So I said, okay, 
I'm going to help you. And those were my words. I'm going to move my movement at that time. Zambia must prosper as a movement into this alliance. But I can't join UPND. Mm. Mm. That you made I, that very clear. Very clear. Because From the beginning. Stage, the party, I mean, you hadn't formed the no, party. The movement no. was not registered. No. But mm. he accepted me as equals, even with the other political parties, and said, Mwana, you're my friend. You sit in the Council of Presidents, and you have the same vote. You have the same voice. Yeah. Okay. It was out of those 11 meetings that we had. And I said to him, this is, these are my terms. I know that the players from the background were insisting that the vice president of the UPND alliance must come from the other opposition political parties. I know that. And if to speak, not that I brag, I was the forerunner because of our association, our friendship, and our history. But I didn't want to be part of his government. That I made clear. I didn't want any position. He was a bit disappointed, because even when we spoke and engaged, he kept asking, but if you don't take up any position, then how are we going to work? And I said, but you've got people. He wins elections, and the first people we are seeing around Nichilema, the first few days was you. Tell us. Uh, just like Wasata, after the results came out and the UPND alliance had won the elections, I was at home with my wife, and he goes, Mana, uh, you've done this before, but also... The secretary of the cabinet, I know, is your friend. He's our friend. We're together on campus, Simon Meet. So I want you to be chairman of the committee that is going to take over government, like we did Kulibasata. The informal transition. The form, uh, informal transition. Mm. So I said, okay, uh, how do we do this? No, 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 where are you? I said, I'm at home. No, 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 please come to community house. So I went. And he gave me a list of about 15 people. You shall lead this delegation of the UPND Alliance. But you shall speak from a position of the Council of Presidents. And whatever government, whatever secretary of the cabinet wants about me, you should be the one to call me. We shall be talking, then you tell them what I want. I said, fine. On that list, we had people like... Uh, former Secretary of the Cabinet, Leslie Mbula. We had people like Ambassador Skazwe. We had the young man who went to Tanzania, Buadia Anthony. We had three other former ambassadors, females. Uh, I can't remember their names. And just a category of it says, this will be your team. You go to Secretary of the Cabinet and take over. So I called Simon Mitty. Simon, KBF. Ah, oi, Shan, uh, there's a committee formed. You know what happens when these things... He said, no, 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 it's okay. I also have my PSAs and things like that. So we agreed on a date. Mm. When to meet, and then we had to go and meet in the same conference room where I met Dr. Kanganj. Now it's the UPND Alliance taking over government from the PF. You can see the irony. I am now torn, but I think he was also playing psychological warfare on the part of B because he wanted to make sure that they see that it's a former PF guy who's getting power mm. on behalf of the alliance, which was smart on his part, but it was a stab on the part of PF. So we engaged with Simon initially in his office, then we walked to the conference room, we found the PSS, foreign affairs, home affairs, then we formed the committee now for the inauguration ceremony. They wanted to know the list of, candidate, uh, list of invitees coming from the president, how the presidential portrait would be taken, the usual. I knew how the format was going to go, so we agreed. Those committees began to work. We dispersed them, and they began to work. And every report Simon Mitty came up with as Secretary of the Cabinet, he came through me. Then I started taking him to community house. Uh, the president-elect at the time, Aga Inde, insisted that every meeting I had to be present because he wanted to be sure that it's the three of us. Simon Mitty, 
himself and me talking and agreeing on how this transfer was going to be done and the smooth. There but is a famous it, picture of President Rupia Banda, uh, Jakaya Kikwete, President Edgar Lungu, and some of you were in the background. What necessitated that meeting? Why was it important that they met? We were at Community House. I had been summoned by my friend, the President, Aga in the HLM, and he was trying to get some information away from me. And we were trying to discuss on his list of invitees. Uh, the phone rings on my phone. It's time on meeting. Boy, where are you? I said, I'm at Community House. Ah, good. Is the president-elect there? I said, he's sitting in front of me. Ah, good. Um, the president, meaning Edgar Lungu, wants to have a meeting with the other presidents and the president-elect. Can you facilitate that you come to State House? So I say, well, we're going through a list of things and stuff, but give me five minutes, I'll get back to you. So I switch off the phone and I say, this is Simon Meet. There's a meeting, uh, former President Rupia Banda, former President Kikwete, I forget the other president. From, I think, Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah. White, we're white hair and yes, things, yes. yes. And, and President the, African Union. Correct, and mm. President Lungu at State House. And they want to meet you so that I take you there now. He says, I'm agreeable to the meeting, but we can't meet at State House. And I say, why? As long as Lungu is in State House, I can't go to State House. These were his words. Mm. I say, okay, fine. Then what do you suggest? Tell Simon meeting. The meeting can take place, but not at State House. They change the venue, and wherever they suggest, we can go. So I pick up the phone. I call Simon Meet. Boy, the president-elect is willing to have the meeting, but he says the venue must change. You come by way, and you know we are very close. We were. and the way Simon speaks, that, yes. of course. You, we can't move four presidents because of. I said, Mona, you want the meeting or you don't want the meeting? These are my instructions. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I said, I think he said any neutral place, but not state house. Okay, give us an hour. These presidents will move to Arabi when we get to Arabi's home will call you, then you bring the president-elect. I said, no problem. And true to word, one hour, 15 minutes, Simon Mitty calls again, boy, to Afika. So can you start off now? So I went back and I said, oh, mana, to Afika, Korea. So we can start off. Okay, fine. Where are they? I said, Arabis. Ah, Arabi, we can go. So that's how we zoomed. The, would you call that road at what? Like a few road? No, his road. Uh, li 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 ring road. Uh, oh, ring road. Mm. Right oh, where through. President Richard from Community House. Yes. Ring road. Right through to Kamala. Then we get into Kafir Road. Then start going up again. And then we get to the traffic circle. Yes. Then traffic we circle. turn to Arabi's home. We arrive. He says to me, go and check who's there. I said, but we're already here. You think Arabi would harm you? No, just check. I went. Very embarrassing for me. Mm. A very emotional meeting. I went, greeted President Kikwete. Arabi gets, ah, KBF, where's the president elect? I said, he's in the car. He just says, we check. By this time, remember, he has no protocol. Mm. So he says, but you're my friend. You can play protocol for me. Whatever. And you're in the Council of Presidents Alliance, so I trust you. You're fine. I greet the other presidents. President Lungu is in a corner. And, and that, he has just lost an election. And he has just lost an election. But he has lost an election to his former strategist, mm. former advisor, and a former confidant. Who has now come to introduce a new president? A new president. It was emotional for me. I didn't like that meeting. I I felt this. Yeah. And in my heart of hearts, I was trying to convey to the president, it shouldn't have been this we way. Shouldn't have gotten we shouldn't have gotten to this point. Mm. 
But again, with the sense of Les Animali Otola, mm. my words, but PF Mukashala Muri Mwamuni. At that point, my Mwamuni had arrived. Mm. And the presidents were sitting, and President Lungu was in the corner, and I felt bad greeting the president. Now, to be former president and ushering in a friend who is president elect into this meeting. But I had to do it because what's done is done. It's what it is. So is he coming? I said, no, I'm going to get him now. I just wanted to check who's here and what's going on. I went At out. that stage, had President Lungu considered, or oh, that was a concession? No, he had, he had considered. He had considered. Graciously for him, at least between me and Simon Mitty and our talking and everything, he had considered. He was being very presidential about it. I must commend him. Mm. He was very presidential. All he wanted was certain terms and conditions to be conveyed. When I went to pick up my friend from the car to bring him to the meeting, he almost insisted, Moana, stay with me. I told him, no, this is a meeting for president. I cannot be here. You discuss. But we are just next door. Vara mm. being his usual, you know him. Uh, KBF, you know, Piri. go to the kitchen with your friends and order what you can and we'll be done in here. I said, no, Papa, we are, we are next door. Mm. And the meeting, I can't speak intelligently as to what went on in there. Yeah. But I think two and a half hours later, they emerged. Took two and a half hours. Yes. They mm. took pictures and whatever. No, Moana, come and I said, no, no, I'm not part of this meeting. You take pictures as president. And that's the end of the story. And then we, we had tea, of course, with Wapiri, a few samosas, and, and we watched the animals on the other side. The meeting was over. And then we had to drive back. And uh, we drove back. I had a conversation I can't put on camera mm. with my friend, uh, which gave me a bit of a, a fear. But it gave me an insight as to what was discussed in there. And then I realized, oh my God. This is the mind of my friend. And from that moment, I started drawing back. But fast forward, we get to community house, no mana, this and this. He briefs me, says what, whatever, whatever, but then the inauguration. And power now is transferred. Graciously, again, uh, President Lungu, to his credit, very presidential, comes with his daughter Tasila to the Hero Stadium, hands over power, peacefully, peacefully, without a squam, a complaint and things. But that meeting, brokered by the late fourth Republican president, may he so rest in peace, Waharabi, was very essential into what culminated into the inauguration because before there was a bit of tension um, I was privy to that most of it I can't put on camera again but it was ironed out and Simon Mitty and myself were in the thick of things because the president-elect on the one hand had said this is my man whatever you want talk through him so whatever Simon Mitty wanted whatever government wanted Simon would call Mwana I need to go to community house I'll drive to cabinet office, leave my car, get into his car. We'll drive to community house together, have this tri-tide meeting with the president-elect and whatever. Simon will drive me back and like that and like that. Eventually, all the committees worked, foreign affairs, dignitaries arriving, home affairs, security. The inauguration was a success and the handover was done. But I need to say this like I said with the other presidents. With Balungu, in terms of his leadership, I found him to be an easygoing president who wanted to accommodate the views of a lot of people. But he didn't have a very good team. Um, one of his 
perhaps failures, which I hope now he may have seen, was that he kept some of the people who had ideas to move the country in the background, and he put people who he trusted, but who may not have had, forgive the word, but the intellectual prowess to have to advise him. So everybody was looking for answers from Galungu. I believe that when a president is in office, he needs a pool where he can draw ideas from. And fortunately, there were very few people within Valungu's cabinet that had those ideas. They were just ordinary politicians who wanted to get by. Now, in the 21st century, you don't need that kind of leadership. You need every brain on the cabinet table inputting into the presidential mind so that when the president takes a decision, it's a well-rounded view of what the problem is. Whatever cab memo is taken there, it doesn't have these connotations of personal gain from a ministerial perspective or from a procurement perspective and things. It became an issue. Um, but Walungu allowed too much freedom. And I think that's where some of the players took advantage and played. Some of the things that happened under the watch of the Sixth Republican Party. It was not his fault. It was the players around. But you see, the problem with politics is the buck stops with the head. And that's the problem with politics. So people tend to think, no, but he couldn't supervise. He was weak. And that is a very unfortunate criticism. He was just trying to be a Democrat. And he was trying to be available for everybody. I think with hindsight, he could have done better. But in terms of relations, international relations, in terms of public image, I think he gave us an image of a unifying figure. And also because of the way he came into power, he wanted to unite the country. He wanted to unite the party. And he didn't have any enemies perceived or otherwise except for political adversaries, as in the UPND or other political parties who were there. But within the PF, he tried. But from day one, um, I knew that he was being fought by some of the candidates who wanted to stand in 2014, remember? Mm. And some of them <clears throat> who didn't have enough respect for him because they had this perceived impression about him. And for some of us, it was like, it was you guys who gave us this candidate. Again, it started backfiring on our side. And yet, we had all these senior citizens advising us, some of them friends to the late Sad, saying, just let him help him and, and things like that. So I think he was a very good unifier, so to speak. And as a person, you can't fault Walungu for being open. No, he tried. But some people were streetwise. And when you've got people who are streetwise, they can beat you to the game because they know your weaknesses before yeah. you understand them. And they did things which were for their benefit, yeah. unfortunately. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.